Jane and Alexander had enjoyed five years of harmonious marriage. Their relationship was virtually free from any significant issues. However, there was one significant point of contention in their marriage, Alexander's extensive involvement with his relatives. According to Irina, it would be quite nice if Alexander could reduce the amount of time he spent with his family. To be clear, she had nothing against loving and supporting one's family. The key, though, was finding a balance, especially when you're already an adult with a job, a spouse, and other responsibilities. In Irina's eyes, it seemed like Alexander couldn't do without his family. He initiated calls to them, and he was always responsive when they reached out to him, often several times a day. In fact, it appeared that he consulted his parents and sister for their input before making any decision. Sometimes, Jane found herself wondering if she had not just married Alexander, but his entire extended family. Despite this family-related challenge, Alexander seemed like the ideal partner in all other aspects. Had it not been for this issue, Jane might have had a different perspective on the relationship. In fact, Jane hadn't initially planned to get married so soon, as she wanted to first build her career and save money to secure her own living space. At that point in her life, Jane had already embarked on the search for her own apartment. She was making headway in her quest when she quickly crossed paths with Alexander. In just a matter of months, their connection evolved from casual interest to a shared desire to build a life together. Alexander had an apartment of his own, which had originally belonged to him and his sister as an inheritance from their grandmother. However, he later bought out his sister's share, making the apartment solely his. After their marriage, the idea of Jane purchasing her own apartment became irrelevant. The money remained in her account, patiently waiting for an opportunity for its carefully saved funds to be put to a meaningful use. Jane had no intention of squandering her savings on trivial expenses. On the other hand, Alexander's sister, Margarita, seemed to have different financial priorities. Margarita, who was around the same age as Jane, lived a more frivolous and less responsible lifestyle. She was a divorced single mother raising two young children, a son and a daughter. For a considerable time, Margarita and her parents used up the money she received from her brother as her share of their grandmother's apartment. They spent it on various trivial expenses, enjoying dining out regularly at restaurants with dishes like a $28 omelette. Eventually, their funds dwindled to nothing. Margarita appeared unconcerned about this financial depletion, relying on her income for such frivolous expenditures. Her parents covered all their daily needs. Jane found it challenging to comprehend Margarita's financial behavior. She questioned her husband, Is your sister even considering her future? I'm puzzled. How will she manage when your parents can no longer work and retire? At that point, they may need financial support with an adult daughter and two children to care for. They won't be able to support her anymore. Alexander attempted to alleviate his wife's concerns, saying, Don't worry, Rita earns a decent salary. She has never felt the need to save money for the future. She's confident that if the need arises, she can manage. In case of emergencies, you might require a significant sum of money as life presents various unexpected situations. Margaret never kept more than a single month's salary in her bank account, and she relied on her brother in case of unforeseen circumstances. Jane found this response less than satisfactory. She wondered why her husband should be responsible for her sister in any emergency situation. After all, Margarita was an independent adult and should take responsibility for her financial future. However, this situation was still purely theoretical. Initially, Jane refrained from arguing with her husband. But as time passed, Alexander and Margarita's parents were aging, and Jane's predictions began to come true. Leon and Viktorovich retired due to health issues, and he spent a considerable amount of time in the hospital. When he was finally discharged, the doctors advised him to follow a strict regimen, avoid excessive stress, and seek peace and quiet. This was challenging to achieve, living in the same apartment with two active young children. Leon and Viktorovich's grandchildren were at an age when they were full of energy, running around, screaming, and often causing havoc. Unfortunately, Leon and Viktorovich did not fully understand their behavior. The constant noise gave him headaches, making him irritable and causing him to scold the children. When they started crying, he would ask why they were making it worse for him, and it was challenging for Margarita to calm him down. She reminded her mother that children should be allowed to explore, experience life, touch everything, and learn by trying. They acknowledged that it was indeed a difficult situation. Mom, Christina, I'm not sure what advice to give you in this situation. Perhaps you could consider enrolling the children in sports clubs. This would keep them occupied outside the house, allowing their father to rest. 
Plus, when they return home, they'll be too tired to be too mischievous, suggested her son. Christina agreed with the idea, so they enrolled the children in sports clubs. The daughter joined gymnastics, while the son participated in football. Initially, it appeared that the situation had improved, but it was only a brief respite. The children didn't enjoy their sports activities and began crying, requesting to stay home. At first, both their mother and grandmother ignored these pleas. However, a turning point occurred when Margarita's daughter, Lena, hid behind a closet to avoid gymnastics. It took some time to locate her, resulting in a missed lesson. Margarita's son, Kostya, one day simply ran away from the football stadium and spent time in a nearby yard with other kids. Margarita received a call inquiring about her son's whereabouts, as it seemed she had dropped him off for practice. This incident frightened Margarita, who realized that the children would do almost anything to avoid their sports clubs. They had to be withdrawn from the clubs, and they once again started bothering their grandfather at home. Meanwhile, Christina began expressing her concerns about her health and her impending retirement. Margarita had to contemplate how to support herself and her children on her own salary. Along with this newfound sense of independence, the idea of living separately started taking shape in her mind. Are you seriously considering renting an apartment? Christina immediately expressed her concern. Mom, I think it would be better for everyone. Margarita nodded towards her father. You'll finally have some peace from the constant noise and children's clamor, and you and Dad won't have to support us anymore. So guess I'm planning to move out soon. Christina shook her head. I don't mind you living separately, but not in a rented apartment. You never know what conditions you might encounter. Some apartments could have issues like cockroaches, broken heating, or plumbing problems with leaky pipes. They might be dirty or in need of repair. Plus, not every landlord is accommodating. If you had your own place, I wouldn't worry, but moving into a rented apartment, especially with young children, is a risky idea. Margarite asked, but where will I find my own housing? I have very little money in my account. With that amount, I won't even qualify for a loan. I've already spent what I received from my brother long ago. I didn't realize I was wrong, but now I'm not sure what to do. Money won't just fall from the sky. Christina suggested, what if you turn to your brother for help? He has always been there to support you and has said that he'll be there for you in case of need. I think you should ask him for a loan. Margaret responded, that's a great idea. Let's talk to Sasha about it. It hasn't been too long since we asked Alexander for a loan of the amount I need to buy my own apartment. I understand the situation. Alexander replied, I understand, but how much do you exactly need? You know, I don't have an abundance of spare funds either. Christina chimed in, the more the better. I hope this helps. Marguerite further explained. If Rita can buy an apartment outright without needing a mortgage, that's great. But if she doesn't have that amount readily available, I can take a mortgage for the difference. After I pay off the bank, I'll start repaying the debt to you. In general, the more you can lend, the sooner your sister will be able to pay you back. Alexander admitted, I must confess, I have a substantial amount of money saved up. Except for the minimum down payment, it's just been sitting in the bank without any particular use. My wife, Ira, had intended to use this money to purchase her own living space before we got married. However, now that we're living together, she doesn't have an immediate need for it. Marguerite and Christina were delighted. So, you'll talk to your wife, and she'll agree to lend Rita this money. Alexander agreed. Well, of course, we'll discuss it. Later that evening, Alexander initiated a conversation with his wife, saying, Jane, my sister has decided to move out from her parents' place because the kids are making too much noise and disturbing mom and dad's peace. Plus, it will help reduce the financial strain on Rita's parents. She's considering buying her own apartment. She has mentioned the idea of renting, but it's challenging for her to find a reasonably priced place that accepts two children. She prefers to buy her own apartment. Jane was surprised. I thought she usually spends all her money as soon as she gets it. Alexander replied, that's true, but she's really looking to secure her own place now. Alexander clarified, well, yes, she's looking to buy an apartment, and she's thinking of borrowing money from us. Jane questioned, so she wants to borrow from us. Even if I were to agree, we don't have that much free money to buy an apartment. It's definitely insufficient. Alexander responded, I understand that, but you do have the money you saved up for your own purchase. I believe we could lend that money to my sister. Later, when she pays off the bank, she will surely return it. Jane frowned, yes, but I've been saving for so long to buy an apartment for myself. Do you really want to spend it on your sister's housing? Alexander explained, yes, but she will return the money over time. 
Are you absolutely sure she won't? Jane remained skeptical. Your sister has always struck me as rather irresponsible when it comes to money. It's unclear whether she will repay her debt. And even if she does, when? In 25 years? Alexander insisted, I'm quite certain she will, and I would make sure she does. Jane, however, interrupted, I'm sorry, but my answer is no. We won't use this money for anything. Moreover, given our significant and essential expenses, especially since we won't be lending to your relatives, Jane firmly declared. But Jane, please listen. Alexander attempted to argue and persuade. However, his efforts were futile. I've already made it clear. We won't discuss this matter any further. But I already promised my sister and mother that they can rely on this money, Alexander explained. Jane couldn't contain her frustration. How can anyone count on someone else's money? It's as if everyone's lost their minds. You and your relatives are all healthy, capable adults who haven't encountered any serious difficulties. In such matters, people should rely on themselves rather than expecting assistance. From Alexander's family was quite disappointed by this news. Is there no way to change her mind? Christina asked with a sense of dismay. I don't believe I can persuade her. She can be very obstinate, Alexander replied. Besides, I've heard that Olga came up with a new idea. In a divorce, all marital property is split equally. So perhaps you could suggest that we get a divorce to secure this money. Mom. Alexander looked at his mother with profound surprise. You must be joking. I was just asking, Christina said, shrugging guiltily. In any case, it seemed impossible. Jane pointed out that the money was mostly saved up before their marriage, adding a tinge of melancholy to the conversation. All right, since it didn't work out here, we'll have to think about our next steps, Marguerite amused. When Alexander returned home after discussing the situation with his relatives, Jane was eager to know their reaction. He admitted, better than I expected, especially from my sister. Jane hesitated for a moment, and then continued, you know, I've been thinking. Don't look at me like that. I won't change my mind about the money, but I have a distant relative who's looking to rent an apartment. She's reluctant to deal with strangers, so she's offering a rent rate that's half the usual price. The apartment is quite spacious, with two rooms and a bit interior. I thought, why shouldn't Margarita and the children temporarily move there? This way, she can save money and eventually purchase her own place. Alexander was delighted with the idea. I'll definitely propose this option to my sister, he responded. Margarita was also quite keen on the idea. Together with Olga, she visited the apartment, inspecting everything to see if it was suitable for her and her mother. Margarita readily accepted her sister-in-law's offer to move into the apartment of her distant relative, and she had no objections to having children in her place. She began to handle her finances more responsibly, and her savings slowly started to grow. Jane finally felt relieved, as the primary reason for offering the apartment to her relative was to mend the family conflict that had arisen due to her refusal to lend money to her husband's sister. Now the situation was resolved, and everyone was at ease, with no lingering resentment. It all worked out perfectly.